My name is Brooke. Um, my major is construction engineering, uh, and I'm a senior. I'll graduate in December. I'm Tyler Forty. I'm a junior. I'm also majoring in construction engineering. I'm also the secretary for our NSC chapter. My name is Cassidy Livens. I will be graduating this May, uh, and I'm our AGC president. I'm Miguel, I'm a junior, May 2020. I'm Dawson. I'm a senior graduating in December. I'm studying construction science and management, and I'm the Kansas State AGC president. I'm Hannah, and I'm a junior I'm Shannon Case Beard. I'm a faculty member at Kansas State University in the Department of Architectural Engineering and Construction Science. You know, despite my youthful complexion, I'm not a millennial. So, <laughs> <laughs> noted. Uh, first question. And this is for, for either, either students on, on both, both schools. We've got juniors and some seniors here. What year? Was it, it be, whether it be freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior year that you accepted to do a summer internship? Anybody got that? Well, I'm in fifth year, so it would have been my junior year, third year of college. All right. Other? Uh, my sophomore year, so last year. Okay. After my freshman year. Okay. All right. With that in mind, and obviously, I, if anybody in the audience does not recognize the value of internships, if you're not doing that within your company, you are going to the back of the bus. Okay. Why did you, what, what prompted you to go with the company that you did that first internship? What, what caught your eye with that company that said, man, I'm going to do that this summer? Anyway, this is this is open forum. So to be completely honest, um, I wanted somewhere where I could obviously get all my uh, hands-on learning, but I also didn't want it to be a terrible summer where I had only bad memories. So I kind of went after a company that also looked like they had a lot of fun and kind of treated their interns well. Mine was a little bit different. <coughs> I had a few friends at the intern company said good things. I ended up starting with them. I didn't really know a whole lot about them and uh, ended up enjoying it. And I signed up for my third year with the same company. Well, to add to that, uh, I got one. I was lucky enough to get one my freshman year. And uh, as a freshman, uh, not a lot of companies are looking to uh, get you as an intern. So just kind of had to get what I could. Okay. Others? Uh, similar to Miguel, it was like not many companies were hiring my freshman year. Um, I interviewed with a couple and then ended up uh, around winter break is uh, when I signed on with the company that I interviewed with. Um, I went to work for a company last summer and just type of work, um, kind of the exposure that they're going to give me. Uh, it was a great experience. Can't say. Where did y'all find out about these internships? We are very lucky at Pitt State. Um, we have a company day event where over 200 companies come and talk to us and try to recruit. Um, and then throughout the semester, we have companies coming in all the time to present about their company and then uh, interview with, with us the following day. <coughs> We also have an event in the spring, uh, not as big as our company day, but uh, more hands-on stuff. So we get to, you know, run equipment and talk to companies there too. So. This uh, tech. What, how'd y'all hear about? Well, um, through our department, we have a job board where companies come and sign up um, or post sign up on our job board that any students can come and sign up for open interview times. The company just sends representatives during that time. And so that's probably the main source for our um, major to get internships. The internship I got after my freshman year was actually through the just general engineering career fair which some companies come to, but typically they aren't looking for construction science majors there. Um, I just happened to find one company that <coughs> came to our job board and was at that career fair. How many of the audience are aware 
of these these job board postings at Kansas State, Pittsburgh State. About half half the group. Uh, Joe, Shannon, you want to share how that process takes place in terms of when y'all start that that process and, okay. and putting that available? Go ahead. Yeah. You want to so. Uh, you know, typically for the fall semester, we'll have companies that will start to make contact with our department, you know, at the tail end of summer, come the August uh, time frame. And, and what we see is really heavy traffic in the first um, half of the semester. You know, there are companies that, that end up coming throughout the entire fall, fall semester, but it's very heavy. Um, in the first half, I would say, you know, we probably average two to three companies a week that come in and format as they, they come the evening before. Uh, give a presentation about the company. This, the, uh, the, the job notice has been posted for a couple weeks leading up to that. Students have signed up for interviews, sent their resumes to those employers. They attend the, the company presentation the evening before, and then, and then the next morning the interviews uh, begin and, and, and continue uh, throughout the day. And then, you know, probably by the last uh, quarter of the semester, it you know, really tapers off, and you know, the last of the companies are kind of coming through, and then it, it renews itself in the spring semester. And so the companies that are that are coming, as was mentioned here, um, talking to younger students, looking for uh, the, the chance to, to bring them in, bring the students in as interns. Um, they're certainly they're chasing our, our graduating uh, seniors, trying to land them uh, if they can. Uh, a lot of our a lot of our students end up accepting positions one to two semesters uh, before they graduate. So that's a, you know, that's kind of an interesting dynamic to, to continue to have another year of school ahead of you when you when you land a job and try to remember to stay focused on your on your academic work. Um, but uh, that's, you know, that's, that's been the format we've had at K-State uh, for a number of years. As, as Dawson mentioned, college engineering does conduct a career fair, but because we have this direct access situation for employers and, and to come and talk, talk to our students, I would say probably 90% of our job connections happen through that, through that connection. Shannon, would you be, you and Ray, you'll be the contact of a company that is not Aware of that, absolutely. To get plugged into that, absolutely. Yeah. After after this presentation, anybody would like to, to get my contact information, I'd be happy to share that. Ray Buell is our department head. Ray actually does all of the scheduling and coordination, but you know, several times I'll meet people throughout um, different interactions and, and ultimately funnel those companies to uh, to Ray to, to get that set up. Would that would that be helpful for some of the companies that may not be aware of that to to be able to get you plugged into that? Maybe agency could get some information out. Uh, our entire membership. I mean, the assumption is everybody knows what how to go about working with these universities and other universities. Because I know a lot of our companies are also uh, heavily involved in this one in Oklahoma and Missouri and, and Nebraska and Colorado and some other outlying states. Uh, but a lot of focus is on Pittsburgh State, K State. Joe. Okay. Uh, our process is much the same. Uh, uh, night. Time presentation the night before and interviews the next day. Uh, again, we put the sign up sheets weeks in advance of when the company's coming. Um, Janelle Callan in our office is our administrative assistant. She's the one that coordinates and keeps the calendar for all the company visits. Uh, her number is 620 235 if you contact her direct, uh, the student helpers in the office will, they know the calendar, they know what days are available. We try to, at all possible, never have more than one company in a given day. Uh, we want that to be your day and not to be competing with two or three other companies at the same time. So that gets a little more difficult sometimes as we get in the towards the end of the semester or something, when everybody's <coughs> trying to do it at the same time. Uh, but for the most part, we're able to keep it to one company a day. So it's your day that's focused on you and not three or four others. Uh, the exception to that is our company day. And we do that in September each year. We started it in the School of Construction um, about 16 years ago. It was just the School of Construction that did it. Then we started expanding it into the College of Technology for all the departments. So there's about 200 some companies that come to that two day event. Uh, usually 100 to 110 will be construction companies. Uh, so School of Construction pretty much dominates that event. Uh, we cr 
created it with the intent that you don't get, you don't get lost in the shuffle over at the university career fair because that's all four colleges and 200 some companies come to that so you're not mixed in with the business and arts and sciences and everything else company day is just the college of technology and for the most part it's like speed dating because <laughs> there are a hundred companies for the day we do construction there'll be a hundred companies lined up and down the hallway and so it's your opportunity really to get a chance to uh, talk to the students uh, they're encouraged uh, we let them out of classes uh, they're encouraged to go out and talk to as many companies as they can in that given time frame uh, it's not so much about doing the interviews that day is just giving you exposure to all the students so you can talk to them about what you do some of the universe or some of the companies will come that come long distances from out of town We'll try to do interviews that week. Uh, if you're a Kansas contractor, I think it's better for you to come another day. Uh, just because by the time the students do five, six, seven, eight interviews in one week, uh, you kind of get lost in the show. So if you're a Kansas contractor, come to that event but come back another day to do the actual interviews when again it's all about you and not everybody else that's there. That day is really intended to be an exposure, give you a chance to <coughs> just talk to a lot of people in a one day event. Now we'll, um, we're going through the spring interviews right now, the sessions. Uh, that evening session really is a great opportunity for you to tell the students about what you do, how you do it, where you do it, what you do, uh, and what they'll do as an intern or what they'll do as a full-time employee, you know, what you're trying to hire. So it's really an hour for you to do it. And uh, the students that have already signed up for interviews typically will attend that, and then those others that are just interested in getting more information will attend also. And we'll have, um, uh, by probably April, uh, we will have companies already start to sign up for fall of next year for interviews. Uh, so it's, it's pretty competitive. Uh, so you need to be planning your schedules well in advance if you want to get the day that you want. The longer you wait, the more difficult it is to work the schedules out. So Shannon and Joe, if a company wanted, do you all have uh, a process where if I'm company XYZ in Lawrence, Kansas, uh, I can send you an email and I can get on some kind of uh, notification or I'm just going to get on your particular website to kind of talk about how, again, some of these companies have been in, in this process for many years and, and I'm preaching the choir, but again, we're not going to make any assumptions that everybody knows what y'all's processes are. So could you share it with the group? If I've never done, you know, it, as a company, never had any relationships other than maybe seeing the, the departments at an APC event or somewhere else, how could I get in that loop? Okay. Again, you can call Janelle Callen in our office or you can call me direct. My number is 620-235-6181. Or you can send me an email at j 11 pittstateedu I'd be happy to explain the process to you or get you in contact with the office staff that could help you pick a date that's when you want to try to do it. And in a case state, you can reach out to our departmental office. So the telephone number is area code 785-532-5964. Uh, you can email Ray Buell, our, our department head, and his email address is R Buell, that's B-U-Y-L-E, at KSU.edu, or you could also email me. Uh, my last name is Case Beer, like a case of beer, so it's S Case Beer at KSU.edu. What a great call sign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's, why, that's why he's over on, on the sales promotion side, too. So. Let's recap real quick. Let me show our hands of the seniors. Okay, so we have one here and two here. The three of you, do you already have job offers? Two, three, okay. 
tell me and tell the group your choice, and you don't have to say where you're going if you don't want to, but what set that company apart? And I guess before I, I ask that question, you've accepted a job. Uh, is it in state or out of state? I just want to clarify real quick. I didn't accept, I didn't receive an offer after okay. my last internship because okay. they were trying to retain right. me for what did you anticipate? Uh, possibly. I actually turned that offer down to intern with a different company for okay. my last summer. All right. <clears throat> I have accepted a full time offer in August. Okay. Um, How many interviews did you do? Approximately. For the full time offer yeah. or just oh, to get my internships? For a, no, back up. We're not doing internships. We're talking about the the job offer that you got. How many other interviews did you do in terms of any other offers? Was this the, the only one you did or did you have other ones? Uh, once I got my offer, I didn't do any interviews with anybody okay. else. But did you have some prior to that, that offer that was given to you? I, no, I didn't go after any interviews. All right. I guess what I'm, I'm looking to be able to do is we spent, the schools do a great job of educating these kids in the fields that you're looking for. But then they do a good job of promoting to both Kansas companies and across the country. In fact, I've told people, both in the political world and the business world, we've become a victim of our own success because both these schools have a tremendous reputation for what they're being taught. And a lot of people in this room have come through these programs. And that's, that's a great thing. But because we've become a victim of our own success, we have seen the East and West Coast companies coming in to our great institutions because they've recognized the work ethic is so much stronger in the middle part of the country than they have back in their respective areas. And one of the things that we're trying to see is what are you seeing in the companies you need your internship and the interviews you've done from some out-of-state companies? And again, out-of-state has a lot of different things, but if you're, they're saying, we want you to come to San Diego, obviously that's an out-of-state problem. But what di differentiates those firms that are not in Kansas from what you're hearing from Kansas firms? And again, this is not to embarrass, this is not to say a right or wrong answer. We're, we're trying to formulate and see how Kansas companies can be in better positioned to be as competitive as some of the things you're hearing and seeing, not just from you, but from some of your colleagues that aren't here today, because y'all compare notes on a regular basis. I know you do. I, I hear those conversations. So anybody jump in. Uh, what do you see that catches your eye from somebody in Houston, Texas, San Diego, Atlanta, New York, Chicago, <coughs> Manhattan, Wichita, Oakland Park, uh, Guard yes. City. Anybody jump in? I think the first one would definitely be the types of projects. Um, just different types of projects they got going on in larger cities, stuff like that. But, uh, Definitely one that definitely stands out would probably be the work life and like their internship programs. Uh, sometimes they'll like break out a bracket and show you like exactly what you're going to do, like a rotation of some sort. Um, that's probably one of the bigger points that stand out to me. Okay. So, in some cases, you believe or you're being sold that maybe there's sexier projects in other parts of the country. And that's one of the things we've heard, ladies and gentlemen, that maybe we assume here in Kansas that we're doing some great sexy projects, but unfortunately, I don't think we're doing a good enough job of promoting what we're doing. And we, we actually have looked at that within our, our young professional group uh, to go around and see some of the more sexier projects, for example, or, or later this year or last year, uh, we had both of these schools do a tour of the Entrust uh, facility. And I believe we also did <coughs> at Cargill, if I'm not mistaken. 
or that's in the mix, but uh, there's other projects around the, the, the state that we believe can compete with the sexy from around the country, but we've got to do a better job of getting that in front of it. Would, would most of you agree with uh, with that statement from, uh, from Miguel? For sure. Anybody want to expand on that? I'm more on the flip side of it. I work for a fairly regional company. I'm not much into the massive, huge billions of dollars a year, billion dollar projects, that kind of stuff. Me personally, I like to, I'm more focused on the people that I work with. If I work with great people and I enjoy what I'm doing with them and it's a smaller company, and I, I know that the president of the company personally, he knows me by my first name and I can associate with everybody and it's more of a smaller, more of a family atmosphere. That's more what I like to have personally. Anybody want to go ahead? Can I say something? You're part of um, the family. I'm going to say so. I've, since college started, I've done probably four or five different jobs slash internships. I've done residential, I've done landscaping, I've done heavy commercial, I've done light commercial. Um, and one of the things I'm kind of like him, where you know, it, to me, I'll build anything. It doesn't bother me what we're building, but I'd rather go to work every day with people that I like to work with. And that's probably the biggest thing. And one of the most frustrating things for me is going through some of the jobs and internships, being with superintendents that didn't want to teach you. So you show up on their job, they didn't know you're coming and you're part of your form for three months. So I think K-State tries a really, or they do a really good job at, at preventing that and getting really good companies to come in. And some companies are, are very good at that. But just from a student's perspective, make sure that you're putting the kids with supers that want to teach. You know, don't put them with somebody that doesn't want to teach because that's the biggest thing. That's why I picked the companies because the company I went with, um, everybody there, if you ask a question, they're more than willing to help. Does that surprise anybody in this room? Employers? Absolutely. I, you know, I frequently uh, ask students when they come back from uh, summer break about their summer experiences, and it's always interesting to me to hear um, students that have a fantastic internship experience. They were exposed to lots of different aspects of the company. They spent time in the field. They spent time in the office. They spent time with the estimating group, maybe the marketing people, maybe the construction people, so they got this really dynamic um, exposure to all these different different facets of the of the business and, and, and other students you'll talk to and it's like how was your summer internship experience? It's like well let, you know, kind, of, kind of like what Drew talked about. Well not, not that great. I was out on a job and and uh, you know I ended up pushing a broom for a couple weeks and filling out a bunch of paper forms and, and so the, you know this morning in the presentation that Susan Fruit um, gave she was making some comments about the differences in what's important to, to, to the younger generation, you know, you know, it's not enough anymore, I think, to just go out and get some construction experience. It's, 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 you know, you have to make sure it was a good experience to really, you know, make sure that, that they, that they recognize the, the positive um, place that your, that your business is so that they want to come back. Does it, does I would it, add one thing right. too, Mike, it is, like you said a minute ago, they talk. So that intern that comes back to school, is your best marketing person or your worst marketing person based on the experience they had with you during that summer. They'll either come back and tell everybody about all the great things they experienced at your company or they'll tell everybody about all the lousy things they experienced. It works both ways. So, so we're all connected to HIP whether we like it or not. It's kind of like job site safety. You can be practicing at the top, but if you're Folks, all the way down to the bottom of the dump, uh, we're going to experience uh, some, some challenges there. Yes, ma'am. Um, kind of going back to what Susan talked about this morning, um, that millennials are different in, you know, what they look for in their life experiences. As far as, you know, the older generation, <laughs> they, you know, they want the longer hours, though they, they view that differently than millennials. Do you feel like these companies from other states understand millennials better than the companies in Kansas or the Midwest? Well, in my personal opinion, and I, for people that are also students can disagree with me on this, but a lot of kids that are from the Midwest and from smaller communities aren't part of the group of millennials. <laughs> 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 like, uh, for example, this summer I worked in a town of 
the company I worked for put me in a town of 2,000 people. And we work 65 hours a week, and I love every second of it. So I'm, I'm guessing that's probably not what most people would consider the millennial of nowadays. But it, I think that probably most of the kids nodded when I said that word. Midwest kids are not in that group, in my opinion. It's interesting because we've had several discussions within ABC. I know the other organizations have had the same thing, but it, I don't think I've seen a generation uh, as much that gets a little perturbed when we use the word millennial. <laughs> Got a little passion there. But I have a few uh, folks that are involved with some of our, our committees. And they are technically a millennial, but they do not want to be referred to that. And so we have tried to make sure we avoid that. Um, let's talk in terms of uh, the things. Give me your top just one or two items that stick out in the mind when you are talking with these companies at job days or things of that nature, uh, what really sticks in your mind that you go, there's a wow factor? And I don't care if that's a Kansas company or a, an out-of-state company. We'll start on the left side, or right, my right side. I mean, when you're talking to companies, you kind of know like what you want to do, where you want to work, so location, type of work, and then, like we talked about yesterday, just culture of a company. Um, if they align with you um, personality-wise, if you click with them, if they're willing to give you a shot, um, yeah. So that's the wild factor for you. Yeah. yeah. I would agree with that. Um, like I said, I view companies as personal relationships, as people that I work with. And if, I, if I talk to somebody at company day and we get along great, we can stand there and talk for 20, 30 minutes, and you know, sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not, because you get in the way of other people. That's, that's what's more important to me, is building relationships within a company so that way I feel like I'm working with almost friends instead of working with just, oh, I just work with that guy. I, uh, I'm kind of in the uh, boat where I like to know what I'm going to do. Um, if they can offer me an internship with not only am I getting hands-on experience, but I'm also working in the office, I'm kind of learning everything. That's that's really what I was looking for because I didn't know what I wanted to do whenever I was getting into the industry, whether it was project management or superintendent. So a company that can offer me, I guess, a lot of different experience really piqued my interest. Uh, like he was saying, diversity is probably one of the top ones I look for. You know, nobody wants to date themselves. That's kind of boring, I feel like. Um, but another one that I really pay attention to is technology. Um, you guys know that we're one of the industries that uses very little amount of technology, but recently, Tecla, all that stuff's like going into industry, so definitely look for a company that invests in that kind of stuff, even though it's pricey to begin with. Um, that's definitely the top priority for me. For me, the well factor, when I talk with companies, I'm looking for the superintendent career track, and so I ask them what's kind of that process leading up to that. And what really sticks out to me is the companies that will give you as much as you can handle let you advance on your own just based off of how you perform and what you can do so that, that way if you want to work harder and, and move up quicker and get to those high responsibilities they'll allow you to do that they'll encourage you to do that that really sticks out to me um, i guess internship wise whenever i was looking for one um, i was more looking for a company that was going to challenge me with their everyday work my last internship i worked with the senior estimator in the department for a month doing basically what he was doing every day but just assisting him with it and I felt like I learned the most from that and then also I liked that I was able to collaborate with other interns and not just work by myself or just mostly doing real work uh, that I was going to benefit from. Is it, what is the motivating factor you said you like to be you like the ability for diversity in terms of your, your uh, responsibilities and things of that nature, the relationships. Uh, talk in terms of 
and there's several people here that hear this from time to time, and we don't want to label your your age group. But there is a, a maybe a misconception that you want to come in, become president of the organization, and you want to make a million dollars right off the bat. And this is not so much your per your your personal uh, opinion, but what you're hearing from your colleagues and things of nature. Uh, what what can we do as employers uh, that want to understand that obviously you're going to come in and you're not going to all of a sudden ascend to the top, but obviously I think you realize, and I'd like to maybe expand on this, working for a smaller company, you have more opportunities maybe to for that upper mobility. But tell us a little bit about what you all talk about from that standpoint in terms of expectations and is there more interest for the, to look at a smaller company over a bigger company? Or is there advantages over a bigger company over a smaller company? Um, kind of in that aspect, uh, whenever I compare larger companies and smaller companies, I guess I don't really look at how much money they make or whatnot, but are you able to still be in a location and build a relationship with the people working around you. I mean, companies have it where you, there's the uh, like Kansas City locations, the Wichita, they all have their different offices and if you're able to build those relationships, to me, I mean, that's, I guess that kind of just goes above all. <coughs> I've worked for a family owned company and I've worked for a large corporation and you'd be surprised about the smaller company actually didn't have like a roadmap or anything of what the ceiling is, how do you advance. The larger company I worked for had a roadmap, a way if you want to be a super, if you want to be president someday. They had all the titles you would go through and the training that you would need to do to get there. So just having some in paper that you could follow, you know, um, that definitely clears things up. So have an employer line out their career paths that for you? Critical path or something like that. Does most people have that built into your recruiting process? If not, uh, I think that would obviously be something critical in, in what they're looking for. Anybody else want to jump in on that? Tell me, tell, tell the group in terms of your group discussions, not where you're going to go and have pizza or beer or things of that nature, but what is the biggest concern that's talk amongst your your department uh, colleagues uh, as you get out of school and you enter the workforce. What is your biggest concern? I mean, there's not, just there's not, not, a right, there's not a right or wrong answer. No, I mean, we have lots of opportunities to do internships, uh, which is important. I, in my experience, I want to do an internship with different companies, different types of work, so that after graduation, I know what works best for me and where I want to be and where I see myself. Um, scary part about, you know, after graduation, not fitting with the right company, um, if, they're not, if they're not willing to teach you or help you grow. <coughs> Just being involved with the wrong people, I think, is the scariest part. Um, that's why I think it's important to get a well-rounded um, experience while you're in school. Do, do you think it's a fair assessment or unfair assessment about uh, the fact that statistics are showing that your generation is going to have 18 to 20 jobs between <coughs> now and graduation and retirement? Do you think that's an accurate statement? That's a lot. I don't know. I, I feel like... If I'm with the right company and the right people and they respect me and I respect them um, and they're going to help me grow, they're going to teach me anything I want to know, why would I leave that, you know? And I'm in college right now to be able to explore those different opportunities. So, no, I, I don't think that's accurate for me anyway. How about the rest of you? I would agree with that. Okay. So, 
I'll use the word millennial, I guess, not very good. <laughs> so a lot of people say millennials don't like to work, and I don't agree with that, but I think that having a good work-life balance is a, is a really big thing, and that's what pushed me away from some of the bigger companies is because, you know, like like uh, Mike said, some of the students come back and they're like, yeah, I worked, worked 70 hours a week, and it was, it was seven days a week, and we worked seven tens, and I, I got three days off all summer, and it's like, you know, and as she was saying this morning in the presentation, we have things that we want to experience. So, yeah, we'll work hard, but let us have our weekend. You know, let us take a week off. You know, don't don't keep that from us. You know, we like to we like to we like to camp, we like to fish, we like to go go on vacation and go do things. So, you know, we will get booked out if you work this week. Like, I promise you, and that's why we leave. So, talking to the future of war, the, the one of the enticements is a little bit of flexibility. I'm not sure from our Colorado presentation this morning that not only go to New Delhi or whatever uh, is on everybody's <coughs> policy state companies, but uh, uh, that flexibility is important to you? Yeah, I think I agree with Drew. The, the, the main thing we're looking at is if we are like expected to work Saturdays, is give some Saturdays off so we have like a full weekend. If that is the expectation in the company with the work hours is I think to have <coughs> multiple little breaks um, and not so much the like long set periods like what you talked about this morning. Yes, sir. Um, kind of having been down you guys' path before, and this is kind of a question for Joe and Chan, but um, as a specialty contractor, I've made my career working in that industry, how much exposure are you guys getting from roofing contractors, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, all those trades to recruit you to get into their workforce? So, well, so since I don't directly handle the recruitment, I don't have hard statistics, but I, I would, if I had to invent, if hazard a guess, I would say that maybe approximately a third of the companies that come uh, to K-State are um, not prime contractors, you know, special contractors of, of one type or another. And we, and we do see uh, all types. We get electrical you know, subcontractors, mechanical subcontractors, uh, roofing contractors, um, concrete contractors, maybe occasionally masonry contractors. So we get a mix of that, but it's it's definitely a, you know, a minority representation compared to the prime <coughs> contractor firms that, that come to see the students. Joe, no, very much the, the majority are going to be general contractors right. for the most part, but we get our fair share of mechanical, electrical, steel erectors. Um, don't don't see many painters. To be honest, a uh, few roofing companies, drywall, uh, but we see, also see the main unit, the uh, fabricators. So steel fabricators uh, will hire our students as graduates. Uh, occasionally, we get. Uh, some that will go into sales uh, in the uh, like Milwaukee tools and different things like that. So we have a few of the larger supplier tool companies will also seek some of our graduates. And we've had some go to work uh, uh, on the owner's side of the equation, so in facilities management. So we've had some go to Burlington Northern Railroad, uh, Spirit <coughs> Systems, some of the big manufacturers like that that have in-house uh, facilities management. I guess if I, if I could follow up on that real quick, I, is that something that you guys are pushing on the students? Do they, do they, are they aware of opportunities that they have as a specialty contractor, or is that kind of like a, everybody's kind of concentrating on the general contracting market? Well, in addition to our AGC student chapter, we have a mechanical contractors association student chapter, uh, so they get a lot of exposure to the mechanical side from that standpoint. Uh, we have about six student organizations. So it would be safety, mechanical, home builders, ATC, they're getting some exposure to that. And whether they're members of the chapter or not, whenever there is a presentation by one of those chapters with a guest speaker, uh, everybody's eligible to go to those. So if they have an interest in it, uh, by all means there's opportunities for them to explore uh, other things besides the student contractors. Yeah. yeah, so you know, most of the students that come through uh, our program are going to have me in you know, two to three classes as they move through the four year uh, curriculum. And, you know, and I occasionally like to throw out my nuggets of wisdom. And one of the things that I, that I like to point out to the students in my classes is to remember all those opportunities. There are way more specialty contractors out there than there are general contractors management firms, and although that's what the majority of our students end up, I try to remind the students not to overlook 
that entire realm of possibility in the following career path with a special contract. One of the things that AGC of Kansas is uh, uh, in, incorporating in 2019 in the Kansas uh, program is we already have 17 year relationships with the community college uh, systems in, in both areas where there's a lot more heavy concentration on the specialty side of things uh, to where we want to try to replicate some of the things that are happening before you the institutions for our subcontractors and specialties to have those same opportunities. But the, the reason why we want to broaden that is we want to have that as a feeder system in these two institutions to where if those two-year associate both Bo tech folks want to continue on uh, to get their four-year uh, degree, they'll be able to do that. In fact, we have some some inserts that are coming uh, for AGC to promote uh, these two institutions down to the high school and community college level. They already have their own marketing, but we have a broader marketing uh, because of the relationships that we've had and ongoing for 17 years uh, with our NCCR tra training curriculum. Uh, so there's some opportunities for specialties and subs to take advantage of that very thing. I, I, I keep talking about millennials and pretty evident they don't think they belong in that group. But we do a survey each uh, fall of our incoming freshmen, so in our industry class. And forgive me, I'm going to try to pull some numbers off the top of my head here that I don't have the survey in front of me. But typically, uh, while we do get a lot of recruits <coughs> students from the Kansas City and Wichita metro areas, uh, probably half of our students come from rural settings, smaller towns. When we ask them what they like to do, it's hunt, fish, outdoor activities, which is perfect. It's no, no big surprise that they like to do those things and want to be involved in construction at the same time. Uh, somewhere around 30, 35, 40% of our students have some kind of connection to construction already. A uncle, an aunt, a father, mother, whatever that's involved in the construction <coughs> industry all were ready in some facet. So they've got to have made that connection to construction somewhere already in their life and they want to continue to pursue that as a career. But I think the biggest thing, it's not a big surprise to us, but every year, Biggest things they like to do are hunt, fish, all those outdoor activities, which just fits perfect in our industry. They want to be outdoors. And I think that's, that's again, we're a victim of our own success that some other parts of the country may not have, have that particular makeup and, and demographics. And, and unfortunately, the last at least 15 or 20 years, and I have to give kudos to both these universities. They do a great job of promoting what they do. Uh, but sometimes they can come back, and from the Kansas construction side, we have to do a better job. We have to step up our game. Okay, okay, I'll throw this in. Occasionally, you don't have to have a calendar to know what time, what hunting season is. <laughs> I, I've had students come in from the pond. You know they've been duck. Honey, all you have to do is looking up down the hallways and see how much mud and stuff in the hallways because you know where they came from. They were out the duck blind before they came to class. I want to stop real quick. I want, want the employers. What's on your mind? You've got these these folks real quick. We're going to start here. We're going to work our way around. Mark, I'm more interested in knowing from the students what the biggest missteps the uh, contractors make when they come to either try to recruit you or during internships? What have you seen them do that just um, was a mistake when it came to trying to do I got, I have one that's... <laughs> Our panel just grew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, satellite over here. But um, I, the biggest thing that I think uh, companies miss, and maybe it's just the way I think about it, is um, when they talk about their culture, you know, um, Company culture is kind of a hot buzzword, but um, me going to Royals games and Top Golf is awesome, but I don't care about that as much. I think when presenters say culture, they say, "What do we do as office outings?" And what I want to know is like your culture is in 
when you win a big job that you've been chasing for months, do you celebrate? Or how do you celebrate? Or is it just shake hands and back to work? Or what happens when someone fudges a bid? And you know, how do you deal with that? How are they, the actual culture of day-to-day -day in the office, you know, going to Royals games and top golf is awesome, but uh, I, think, I think it's kind of a misnomer when they say culture and they start talking about the parties and office events. I want to know how you deal with failure, successes, are you like mentored back into it? That's that's what I care about. And I think that, companies are missing. Anybody want to expand on that? Is that there's two back here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The panel just keeps growing. <laughs> I think one of the biggest missteps that that companies make that come to K State that we've heard about that we talk as among students is when companies come and they pitch their internship to you as something that it totally is not, and then they get there and. <coughs> You know, it's one of those things, like, I would prefer if somebody was coming to find cheap labor for, you know, to get the more hands-on experience, but pitch it as you're going to be like a project engineer intern, that, and then they come back the next summer, they're like, yeah, I was told I was going to be doing office work and then was in the field 90% of the summer. That's a huge turnoff. I would much rather just be told, hey, this is a more labor-intensive, more field type internship or this is going to be an only office internship and you probably won't get into the field that much. Um, so being honest and about what we're going to be doing that summer is, is super important. That's probably one of the biggest missteps because like they said earlier, that happens and then they come back and say, yeah, they told me I was going to be doing this, this, and this, and then I did none of that and was doing something completely different and it's like, oh, don't want to work for them. So, uh, one thing I would say that's definitely turned me off, that the smaller companies probably don't have to worry about it, or the larger ones do, is to be careful flexing that you can work anywhere, or that you can you can go to Colorado, or you can go to California. Because I've had companies say, oh yeah, in our internship, or once you come a full time, you can go work here and here. It's like, a lot of a lot of us, like being from the Midwest, we don't want to do that. I've been turned off from companies because they're like, yeah, you can go to Dallas, you can go to Houston. It's like, maybe I want to work in Wichita, and maybe I want to work in Kansas City or close to home. So I would be careful if you're a larger company and have multiple offices, just kind of figure out what the student wants to do first before you you flex that you can go to these other regions and stuff. So I would just kind of let the student determine that before you, you show that. We'll start down here. Yeah, I've, I've heard a lot of people talk about what you're how you're picking companies and, and talk a lot about finding people that you feel like you're fit with culturally, what the company culture is like. I'm curious, for your, the first time you have exposure to a company, so I'm not a returning internship, but you know, you're going around to a company day and then doing an interview, you maybe get you know, 30 minutes with a gap with you know a couple of representatives and then another 30 minutes interview. So what ways are you evaluating or trying to get a feel for company cultures other than those interactions? Um, I'm interested if you're spending time on the internet, you're talking to other students that have interned there, you follow companies' social media accounts. Uh, what, what ways, other than the touch points, do we as employers need to be conscious that we're presenting a good face? I definitely look at like social media. What are you know reviews? What are other people? What are people in the community saying about this company? Um, companies' websites. I did probably. Ten, at least 10 interviews before I got my first internship. Um, just trying to find a company that, you know, we had mutual respect for each other um, and I could see myself working for them. But before those, definitely online for everything. Others? I know uh, typical for us on our job board, there isn't uh, much of a description, just the company name. So we'll go and a lot of us will write down a few names and take pictures and then go and almost all of our research is on the internet, at least preliminary. What's great about the company day that you, or the time that you get to come and present about your company is there's a lot of people that will go to those that won't necessarily have a plan to interview. They just want to learn about your company. And as you're older in the program, you've been to a lot more of those company presentations and that's where you build your knowledge of, of what these companies or who these companies are. In addition to if you know someone you interned with them, you're going to absolutely talk to those people to see more like what you did and just more about the company. Okay. 
I was going to say, I, I'm married to a Southern Baptist, uh, and, they, and we always sit in the back row, and I was kind of a back row Baptist type, so I'm going to call on you for that situation. <laughs> Questions on the saddle room? What social media specifically, which ones do you avoid for those that are out of touch with social media? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, any of them, really. Like, where, you know, it's not going to hurt you if you're on. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, in, or like LinkedIn, anything like that. Um, I mean, I probably look at, you know, Facebook the most for companies in a professional setting like that, but um, yeah. I think your website's more important than social media. Your website, That's like yeah. your, your front page, your best pitch. Like if you're willing to put work into your website, then <coughs> That's going to get your yeah. attention. Yeah, it's, yeah. <clears throat> Makes sense? We'll stay over here and then we'll work our way over here. Go ahead. I'd like to, to get kind of some insight on internships. Can, can a construction company's team, what, what type of offers, hourly wages, summer, summer wages are, are being offered out there? Because I really don't know how much of the they're offering hourly wages. Joe, so I'm going to put that in Joe instead. It's just yeah. a range. Or We're uh, typically, I've seen, um, our, and you got to understand what, so like <coughs> if some of the students go on these very intensive like wind turbine jobs and stuff. Uh, those are 20 25 $28 an hour deals, all expenses paid, because they're typically out in Timbuktu, middle of nowhere. And you're working six days, seven days a week, whatever, to try to get stuff done. So those are very lucrative internships. Uh, the app, the typical ones usually are more in the 13 to 15, 16 hour type wages. Okay. Well, I have to apologize. I, I don't, I don't see the back end of that process. So, so I'm going to call on our ad hoc uh, panelists in the audience if they're willing to share. Chris, just, just, just one, one deal because I'm going to get to a couple other reporters to ask a question. Say so 14 to 18 is free too. Okay. 13 to 18. All right. It gives you a ballpark with housing. Yeah. Housing is provided as a big one. If you're traveling, okay. like you're going to Denver or something. Say that one more time. Like if, if you're, a, say, for example, case state you're going to go to Denver for the summer, it's pretty important that the employer either say, hey, we have an apartment for you to stay in, or we have a house that we own that our interns stay in, or we'll give you X amount of dollars per month for mm -hmm. to find your apartment. That's, That's pretty big. That's pretty typical. Okay. Yes, sir. I'm just curious, on your, in your course settings throughout the program, what is emphasized on communication as far as like bilingual, um, what you're seeing with working with a lot of different cultures, anywhere from architecture to different trades that uh, communication language barriers are very prevalent? I'll start with Joe and then we have a required course, uh, Construction Spanish. So I take, uh, it's a required course for everybody that they graduate. Um, so it, it covers basic communication skills, uh, Spanish, and so we're taking them through tools, safety commands, don't do this, don't do that, or, or look out for this, or stop, you know, very basic. But by the end of the semester, they can identify tools, and basic supervisory type commands, and, and do it in Spanish. My other question with that is, um, you know, we all hope that we have ethics going into the, in, the, the industries, but so many times we're not on every job site, so that it's so important that our employees, you know, understand that their small action behavior could cost us a customer or future 100 years of relationships for a, for a small comment. Do they understand, even though we really try to educate on that? this impact that even their outside or their personal behavior posting on social media or any of that can really affect we, their We have a uh, gen ed requirement uh, in philosophy and multiple choices in there and at least with my advisees I always suggest that they do business ethics course as that philosophy. Uh, number one, they're going to go into business. The number two, get the ethics. There's a couple other ethics classes that could pay for that. But I always suggest the business <coughs> ethics. And then we we don't have a specific construction class, but it is talked about in my contract class, we talk about ethics. 
Uh, we'll put up some different situations about bidding, bid shopping, bid peddling, all the appropriate terms, and you know, get their thoughts about uh, those type things. We had a kind of a impromptu discussion last week in my cost management class about offers. And if you get an offer and if there's a better offer that comes in, what do you do about that? Um, you know, it's, it's in, uh, you know, they have tuition, loans to pay for and everything else. So those extra dollars are always attractive. But if you've already made a commitment to one company, now, now what do you do? And so we, we've talked about that and some said, hey, go, go for it. I said, okay. I can't make that decision for you. But let's look now what's that look like for the rest of your life. Where's the integrity? Where's the ethics involved? Are you just chasing dollars? This is a small industry. It's covered a lot of area, but you'll learn. It's, it's, a, small, it's, a, small it's a small group of returning sources. <coughs> That's sure. Right. Jen, we, so so we, have, we do have a course you know, in our curriculum uh, called, called, about ethics, called ethics. Um, I have not taught that course, so I don't you know, have a, a deep insight into the material we have. We're going to take one more question. Yes, sir. Uh, first, students, faculty from Pitt State and K-State, thanks for being here. I think it's been really helpful, really insightful. Quick two-part question. I'm curious, how many internship opportunities, maybe kind of an average number, that you guys have been offered, and then how quickly were they being offered from your research? Uh, Just my to first, the competitiveness of the interns. My first interview that I did, within two hours, I had an offer. My second one was within 24. What? So there's yeah, some companies that wait two, two, two. Back here. Go ahead. There's some companies that wait two, three, four weeks to buy them. I mean, and then, say so you get off for 24 hours later and they say, we need to know by next week. And then there's another company that they may be more interested in, but they don't get an offer for three weeks. Well, they're already scooped up because they had to let somebody know. So, I mean, it's, it's fast. I know it's also more appreciated than just, you know, I'd rather hear someone say, sorry, we're not interested than just kind of. Yeah, this year, my internship offer came before interview season at K-State even started. We, I got contacted by a company before school actually started. I, we weren't even in class and I had an interview set up and then had an internship a week later before any other company had even come to K-State. So if, if, if you're doing uh, interviews or if you're reaching out, you snooze, you lose, you better follow through fairly quickly just like on the job site. You got a schedule, you're following the schedule, if you don't, uh, there's going to be some, some consequences. Any parting comments <coughs> for these employers out here? Staff? Uh, I'd like to ask one question. Here's, uh, in, in a, I don't know how to uh, wrap this here, but I get more and more students coming to me. Uh, for advice. And here's what they want of you as an employer are asking them what they should get paid. That's putting the students in a box of them in a corner. It's making them very uncomfortable. Because they don't want to tell you. If they shoot too low to try to not overprice themselves, then they probably underprice their value to you. At the same point, if they're honest and they've got good grades and everything else and they tell you what they think they're really worth, now you think they're asking for the world. If, you, if it's from an information standpoint that you don't know what to offer them, call us. We'll tell you what the range is. Don't ask the students. You're putting them in a very uncomfortable position because they don't know what to tell them. So use these resources. Uh, have your HR people. If they're not aware of, of these contacts, uh, contact me. I'll give you all their information. But have that in your HR department. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your future. If you look around at these conferences, we're primarily they're Kansas State and Pittsburgh State uh, graduates. A lot of the owners that are 
part of AGC are graduates from Kansas State and Pittsburgh State. And our goal is to continue that legacy in some form or fashion. I will leave you with this, and this is just one personal opinion. I've heard from my contractors, I've heard from the university folks, well, they may leave us, but they'll come back. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't accept that. I will never accept that. Because in most cases, if they leave, they will not come back. Because if they start a family, things all of a sudden move quickly. So with that in mind, continue what you do in reaching out to these universities. Learn and, and put some of the things that you heard today into your HR platforms and things of that nature. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the profession that you're choosing, the school that you've chosen, and your involvement with these employers. It's much, much appreciated. Let's give these young folks a